Hello there everybody, my name is Chatterack, and now I'm finally ready to talk about my big old vlog I've been wanting to do about E3 this year. I found E3 to be really awesome this year. Um, the last time I did a video like this, I had sort of renamed it along the lines of games that I was excited about coming out this year. But the problem with that is a lot of the times things get delayed and things get pushed back, so it was really kind of not it ended up not being as true as I wanted it to be um, so I figured this year I would do it to where I just talked about E3 because there were a lot of good announcements and I was super duper excited so I really wanted to talk to it so that way you you know and kind of it would just make a lot of conversations so you guys would know the kind of things that I was into and then maybe I could find out the kind of things that you were into it'd be a nice good old time and I figured it would be a good discussion but there were a lot of games I ended up wanting to talk about going into E3 I thought there'd be like you know five or six but it ended up being a lot more of what I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of speed run through everything I'm doing. And I'm also doing them in in, in, in sort of the schedule that E3 was. So I'm going to start off with EA and I'm going to end with Nintendo. So starting off with EA, uh, the EA had a couple of things that were good. Um, I kind of thought their performance was kind of crap, to be honest with you. But they had some things there that I really wanted to see. Like, they had Star Wars Battlefront 2, which looks really, really, really well polished. It is definitely a lot better than the first one, because even though the first one was really cool and it brought back a Star Wars game, which we haven't seen in a while, I kind of thought it fell short as far, as far as being able to hit home for everyone, because, like, me personally, I, I sort of don't like playing, like, you know, PvP stuff, so, like, the only thing I could get out of that was the wave mode, but this game has a nice proper story, which will be really, really cool because for it's the first story ever that it takes you behind. It basically you, you play as an elite spec ops for the Empire, and I don't want to talk about too much of the story because I don't want anyone to get upset that I'm doing spoilers or whatever. But basically, the idea is that in your mindset, the Empire is actually the good guys. So it is like a story, but it's. You know, it'll be really awesome, and I'm hoping there'll be additions to the wave modes and stuff like that, but all they really did was show off, uh, you know, the PvP, but it looked really fun, so I actually might give it a go this time. Um, they also announced a game called A Way Out, which looked really, really cool. It's, it, it, I believe it was developed by the people who did Brothers, which was a game where if you had the gamepad, you controlled both brothers with the thumbsticks, which is really, so that was kind of cool as well, um, but it looks really, really you know the graphics in it are, pr are very beautiful and basically it's a game about escaping prison and it's a very you know it's very heavy on co-op um i think it, it does it, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to play with someone else i'm pretty sure that the game you know it'll be sort of similar to brothers in that aspect but it's a really interesting idea and like you know especially with today's like age with games i think it could work out really well it looks pretty engaging and with a game like that i sort of stopped looking as soon as they showed it off because you know, what you get is what you're going to get. So it's like, I don't want really to get spoiled myself on things like that. So that was pretty, the best thing that, that Microsoft showed off to me, well, I actually, EA showed it off, but Microsoft really had the gameplay for it, was for a game called Anthem. And Anthem is Bioware's new game. And it looked so good. It had all of the bells and whistles. It had this gorgeous open world. Uh, you know, you had these mech suits that um, they were called Javelins, and you know, when Microsoft announced that they were canceling Scalebound, I was devastated. That was one of my most anticipated games ever. It looked so cool, but they weren't really that concerned about it, and I thought that was weird. And then they announced Anthem, and then I figured out why. Because this game is has all the bells and whistles, like I said. It's gonna have, you know, co-op up to four players, where you just go around this world. You know, it's a third-person shooter. You know, first person scenes. It was very pretty. It looked very promising. So I'm very excited to see things on that come out in the future. Um, and then, you know, we roll right into the Microsoft show, which obviously their big announcement was the Xbox One X. And it was it was okay. I, I you know I, I've sort of I've definitely become more of a PlayStation person since the fall of the 360, as I call it. But you know it was it was a pretty interesting system like it was they had some impressive specs it was really interesting to see a console have some type of liquid cooling to it so that was neat um i think honestly my favorite part of it was the fact that they were like you know they're gonna be adding 
original Xbox games to the backwards compatibility program, which is neat. And they're also bringing back the Duke, which was that megalodon of a controller from when Xbox first came out. So, you know, that was all pretty cool. Um, they announced the Metro Exodus, which is another game in the Metro series of the you know, 2033 and Last Light. And that was absolutely breathtaking. The, the graphics in that were really great. And they've changed the, the com they've completely changed the idea of that game to where now it's a completely open world game. And that looked really, really cool. Um, I'm a big Dragon Ball fan. So I was super excited to see that the guys who are behind Guilty Gear, which I believe their company name is Arxis, Arc Systems, something like that, they're developing a Dragon Ball Z game. And it looks super cool too, because it's like, you know, they always had that anime style fighting game. So it was like, why not take a really good fighting game and mix it with one of the best fighting animes of all time? It's, it's, it's awesome. It's a totally awesome idea. Um, and then they finally announced Cupheads, which if you don't know what Cupheads is, Google it as soon as you finish this video. Um, when I go to edit this, I'll probably have images with everything, just so people, like, if you don't know what something is, you can at least see what it is. But Cuphead is a beautiful game where it's basically, like, if you were to take, you know, some of the classic animation styles of, like, Mickey Mouse from back in, like, the 40s and 50s, maybe even the 30s, it's this, but it's a video game. It's very charming. It looks really clever. It looks like it's going to be hard as crap. But it's super, super awesome. I've been looking forward to it for quite a long time. So I was really happy to see that they finally nailed a release date for it. Um, there was another game called Ashen, which is a Microsoft exclusive game. Um, I mean, it'll be Xbox or PC. Um, but uh, it's it's another interesting game where it's, you know, it sort of has, a, it's a very dark game, but it looks... It, it has a long way to go still, so it's sort of hard to talk about it exactly. But it looks like it'll be a very, very interesting game to go along with. I really liked the art style of it. And in one aspect, it sort of reminded me of um, the very first game I ever played on the channel called Malbolgia, as far as, like, sort of just how it worked. But it looked really dark. Um, I've heard people compare it to, like, a, a Dark Souls-style playthrough, so that'll be kind of weird, because that, that wasn't the vibe I had from it before. But um, they also then went into announcing a prequel for Life is Strange. And... I've had Life is Strange in my library for a long time. I wanted to play it on the channel forever, and I just never got around to it because on my old computer, it took forever for me to process videos. And like, 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 because I did the Walking Dead series, and those videos were very hard to do because I didn't, I sort of got stuck in a middle ground of not, I didn't like splitting them up, but I also wanted to do them in one take. So the one takes would be like an hour and a half of recording. And, you know, one time I did it and it didn't work out and then I got really mad and then processing took forever. I mean, like probably like four hours. So now that I have my new computer, it seems like doing the videos is a lot faster of a process and that's really nice. So I'm kind of debating on doing Life is Strange on the channel. Um, I don't know. I really wanted to get the community's idea on that because... I would really like to play them, but I don't know if that's something everyone would want to see. So just let me know in the comments if you got if that's something you would like to see. But the prequel story looked really cool. Obviously, I turned away because it's something that I would like. You know, I sort of want to find out more about from playing the original game. Um, but it looked really neat. It looked really it looked like it was going to be a very interesting story. Um, so then we walked into Bethesda, and Bethesda really, really, really disappointed me. I thought they were going to have a lot more to talk about. But, you know, their games that they have were just games that don't interest me that much. Like, uh, they talked about, you know, the Elder Scrolls Online, which I don't play. So, that sort of didn't really do much with me. They talked about VR, which was cool, but again, I, I, I cannot afford that. So, you know, VR was just sort of out of, the, out of the way for me. But what I was really happy with was the Evil Within 2. And I'm starting my Evil Within series again, so expect to see it over the next couple days. Um, cause I want to finish that because they showed off a trailer for that game and it wasn't gameplay, but whew, it looks so cool. It looks really, really cool. I cannot wait to play it. Um, uh, so yeah, Bethesda, Bethesda really underwhelmed me and then what moved us into Ubisoft, which I love Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed is one of my favorite series ever, despite what people say about it. I absolutely adore and love it. So they had taken a couple years off to, you know, kind of do their own things. Like Ubisoft's really been changing the formula for a lot of how they do things, like as a company and in their games. 
but when they announced Assassin's Creed Origins, I immediately fell in love because I was like, Egypt is the perfect place to go to for the next installment. And it's also going backwards instead of continually going forward like the last couple of games in the historical timeline have been going. So that was really cool to see that. It looks like it's going to be a really nice game. They've changed a lot of mechanics, which I think will all be for the better. It'll make it feel very fresh, even though, you know, it has been two years, so it should feel fresh to begin with. But I think it'll be a really interesting game, and that looks awesome. My <laughs> Truth be told, one of my favorite announcements was Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Because I was like, that's, <laughs> it's, a, it's such a silly, it's such a silly combination of things that it's like, I can't believe it's happening. But it's, you know, it looks like it'll be a nice uh, RTS style game, because I normally have a hard time playing those. So I think with this charming, you know, combination, it'll be a really fun game. It looked really, really cool. It looked smooth. Far Cry 5 was announced a couple weeks ago, and they showed off some more gameplay of it at E3, and that is going to be so much fun. They, they've completely changed it to where the entire game is just about co-op, and, you know, it's... It's it's it, they don't pull any punches as far as like what they wanted to do. So that's going to be another game to me that I, I've always liked. You know, my very first Far Cry game I ever played was Far Cry 3, and I've really liked the series ever since that moment. Um, I did play the first two, but I just it was it was a lot. I, I didn't have an appreciation for that kind of content when they came out. So now I do, and I cannot wait to play it. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Lots of guns for hire sort of things. You can have a dog now. So that's all exciting. So hopefully, I, I don't know with games like that if I'll do that on the channel. It sort of depends on when they come out and things like that. But I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, now we get to my favorite part of E3, which was Sony. Sony completely blew it out of the water like they do every year. And again, you can say I'm biased, which is fine because I, I really have fallen in love with Sony. Um, but their show was great because they just were just announced game after game after game. And it was great. So they started off. At least for me, they started off with talking about Uncharted, which has... I don't really know if it's proper to call it DLC, because it's sort of like its own package game, but there's a there's another story coming out that follows, you know, it doesn't follow Drake, it follows, you know, two of the other characters in the game, and I don't really want to get too far into detail, because I don't want to ruin anything for anyone else, because I don't want to be that guy, but it looks super, super cool. I mean, they showed off the trailer for it, and it literally looked like a movie. It was awesome. Um, then they got into one of my favorite games of the year, which was Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn has DLC of its own coming out. It should be out sometime this year. They don't really have a concrete date. They just said 2017, but it looks like a beautiful expansion, and I absolutely loved the crap out of that game. I had been looking forward to it for a very long time. It To me, right now, it's my game of the year, which I hope it wins, but we'll have to see. But it was really awesome, and I was really glad to see DLC for it. So I was really excited about that. Another game that looked awesome is a game called Days Gone. They announced it last year, and they had another bit of gameplay for it, and it looks so awesome because it's such a it is such an interesting game because it has so many variables to it. It's you know you're in this world of infection, so it sort of has that you know that sort of story element going along with it, and you know and unlike with most. I don't want to say the word zombie because that's not the case, but with a lot of games like this where you have infected or zombies, you know, it's only it seems to be that there's only people that get it. But in this game, that's not the case. I mean, animals can get it, people can get it, and it's not like that they're actually like mindless. You know, they, they it seems like they they're just infected. And there's lots of elements to the game that are really cool. Like there's an there's a full blown dynamic weather mechanic. To where a situation could change very much so so like in this trailer they showed off him having to sort of get around a pack of wolves but with this weather mechanic that's involved if it snows the wolves don't like the cold so you could easily you know avoid that entire scenario and maybe see like a hawk like you know eating away at flesh because the you know those wolves aren't there so you know, it's it's just oh man it had all the bells and whistles it's got great action it's got stealth it's it really the you know the facial recognition was really well that's going to be in a great game when it comes out it's going to be a really really awesome game and then probably the biggest surprise 
announcement of all of E3 was Sony announced a completely HD, come totally remastered from the ground up for PlayStation 4 remake of Shadow of the Colossus, which I, for one, am super duper excited for because it's probably something that a lot of people will hate me for, but I actually never got to play Shadow of the Colossus. I never did. I just, I never got around to it when it got remastered on PS3. I just never got to it. So I'm so excited that that will be my very first time playing it. And that is a game that I would like to play on the channel. I think that would be a really cool game to do. And I'm very interested to do that. Um, God of War was there and holy crap baskets. I really don't even have to talk about God of War, but it's a, it's a new story with, you know, new weapons and things like that. And that's a game that just literally it's, it's one of those games that never disappoints. So, you know, I don't really have to talk about God of War that much, but it looks like it's going to be an awesome story with lots of great action and it's just awesome. Um, I keep saying, um, and that's really irritating me. Um, <laughs> I keep doing it. Detroit was there, which Detroit is an awesome game. It's, um, it's done by the people who had done Heavy Rain and Beyond, uh, was it Beyond Two Souls? Is that what it was called? I sort of forget what it was called, <laughs> which is bad because I really enjoyed it. Um, but it was basically that game that had William Defoe and that other girl as the main character. But anyway, this game's awesome. It's, it, it follows the exact same scenario. There's over 2,000 lines of script in the game because basically you, you are the controller literally of the game. Anything that happens is because of your actions, whether you decide to be violent or whether you decide to be, you know, a little bit more of a pacifist. But basically, it's all around the idea that there are, you know, androids, or I don't, I don't know the proper name of them in this game, in this universe, but you basically have this idea that, you know, you can, you, you, you want to have equal rights for, you know, the androids. And you, how you go about that is basically the entire game. So it looks amazing. Beautiful graphics, great dialogue, tons of script, tons of decisions. So that's another great game. Um... Spider-Man was what they ended the show in, and holy crap balls, that game looks amazing. <laughs> like, it, it, you know, it, it's been in development for quite some time, Insomniac is the one who's actually doing it, but they showed off entire gameplay for it, and that was just freaking, it blew me out of the water. It was so good. It was so freaking good. It was amazing. Definitely can't wait for that to come out. I might do, like, an episode of the game, like, showing off some of the gameplay when it does come out. It's not till next year, of course, like, everything that they freaking announced. But that will be an amazing game when it comes out. Because I haven't had a proper... For me, I haven't had a proper, you know, superhero game in a long time. Because, you know, I really... The last Batman game I liked was Arkham City. I haven't really liked the other ones that have come out since then. So that'll be really nice to play. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, but I, for one, was really excited to hear about Destiny 2 because I absolutely love Destiny. I've never done anything with Destiny on the channel because it was always on PlayStation 4. It's coming out to PC this time around. So I don't know if they're going to let people do it, but um, the beta for the Destiny 2 got announced for both consoles and PC. Um, so if they let people record things, I'm going to try... To maybe show off some gameplay for it on PC when the beta comes out. Uh, they've really, they really wanted to do the PC release right and proper, which is why it comes out in October, as whereas on consoles it comes out in September 6th. Uh, so it looked, you know, it. Nvidia showed off some gameplay where they were able to run the game at 4K. They were able to run it at 60 frames a second. Um, but Bungie had come out and said themselves that, you know based on whatever hardware you have you literally will be able to do whatever you want graphically so i just love destiny so much that i definitely you know will be getting it regardless so i, I really want to see if they'll let people you know record and like share things i sort of feel like they will but you know today's day and age a lot of people don't like it at the same time so then it got into nintendo which i was so happy about because they finally talked about and showed off a lot for super mario odyssey it looks beautiful will be 10 out of 10 definitely we'll be playing that that comes out in october um they announced a lot of titles for 2018 which was there's a new kirby game coming out another yoshi game coming out uh he looks more like yarn yoshi which i love yarn yoshi so that's fun 
Um, they, the, big, the biggest announcement probably was the fact that Metroid Prime 4 is coming out, and that's been a long time coming, and I think the Switch will be a perfect game for the Metroid series. It looks super duper awesome. Um, they also, for me, my, one of my more favorable moments was they announced that they are developing a Pokemon RPG for the Switch, which I said the Switch would be perfect because they never really ever did a console Pokemon game as far as like how the DS games are. They had a couple spin-offs for the GameCube, but nothing really concrete and proper. So that was really exciting. And that was, for me, that was my E3 in a nutshell. Um, I was really excited to hear about all of these games. It was really, really awesome. Uh, and there was a couple of you know indie projects that were there as well, but I didn't want to get into those in too detail because this video would be two hours long. <laughs> um, so that was all the things that I liked. Um, and I was excited. The things I was like the most excited for. That would be really hard for me to pick one or two. Um, but it was really awesome, and I really liked the shows. Sony did the best. Uh, Bethesda did the worst, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I don't know. Let me know what you guys were into. If you know you guys watched E3 or what you guys think of the games that I picked out, and I know just kind of you know let's start a conversation about it. I, w I really want to get more vlogs where you guys are involved. Um, now that the, you know the channel has picked up a little bit more, and we have a lot more people that are actively watching, a lot more subscribers, things like that. I might I kind of want to get back into the idea of maybe doing you know more like Q and A style things. Um, you know, and really just making the vlogs feel a lot more fun and personal, not just for me, but for you guys as well. So, like I said, I'm going to wrap this episode here because this, you know, I'm going a little bit longer than I wanted to anyway, but there were just a lot of things I wanted to talk about with E3 because I had been promising it, and I really wanted to just say what I thought was great. So, thank you guys so much for joining me in this vlog. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know with a like. And like I said, please comment to me what you guys think of, you know, the games that I like, games that you're interested in, you know, whether they were at E3 or not at E3. Just let me know what you guys thought. So, thank you guys so much again for watching this video. I cannot wait to play games and talk with you guys more. So, as always, I will see all you guys on the next video. Bye-bye!